Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to view sales order totals in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So probably the most commonly used form is the sales order form, and the most commonly customized form is the sales order form. So as a developer, there's a good chance that you needed to look at the sales order totals, whether that be the full order total or the sub product totals or the total taxes, the total shipping, um, total discounts, any one of those you may have needed to read at some point while you're writing code. Um, so today I'm gonna show you both how we functionally see the sales order totals for a sales order in D365 and then I'm also going to show you how you can write X++ code to read the sales order totals as well. So here we are, we're on the sales order list page, and I'm going to go ahead and start with a normal non-call center sales order, and I'm going to pick this open order right here. I'm going to actually drill into it. You don't have to um, to be able to view the totals. Uh, the ribbon bar kind of stays the same whether you're on the list page or not, but here's the details of my open sales order. And then if I come up to view totals button and I click on that, I'm actually going to get a dialog pane that shows me all the different totals, the full um, balance on the sales order, the subtotal, taxes, etc. Now it's important to know that this is going to show you the um, open order balance. Once you've invoiced a sales order, these totals won't um, necessarily be what you're expecting. They're really here to show you what is the uninvoiced portion of the sales order. All right, we can dismiss that dialog. Now I'm gonna switch over to back to the list page and I've actually gone ahead and created a call center sales order. I'm, I'm not gonna go through all the details, but essentially if your user that you're logged into D365 is added to a call center, then you come in to the sales order form and you create a sales order. It's going to have this channel on it here um, where it indicates a call center. In this case, I've got the Fabricon um, call center. I'll drill into there. Um, here we've got a slightly different view, so I wanted to show you this. We actually have a complete button that doesn't show up on non-call center orders. And when I click on this complete button, it's actually gonna show me um, an order summary screen where I can view the totals and add payments as well. Um, for some reason right now, when I click this, I'm gonna get an error, but I can actually get the same summary screen if I click the close button here, it's going to pop up my order summary screen and ask me to fill this out before I leave this order. So here again, you can see we've got different or, uh, order totals, including the balance, um, as well as sales tax, uh, shipping charges, things like that. I can also add a payment um, if I'm on the phone with a call center customer and then click submit and that'll move this sales order to in processing. So those are the two functional ways that we typically view the order totals. Let's now take a look at how we would get these same totals within X++. If I switch over to Visual Studio, the first thing you wanna do is create a new project. You can say File, New, Project, and fill that form out. I called mine D365 Sales Order Totals. Next, you can right click on that project and select Add New Item. And for the purposes of this explanation, I've selected runnable class um, job and given it a name and clicked add. If you're unfamiliar with this job, I, I recommend you find my other article and video that explains um, these uh, jobs. But essentially, they're just classes with a main method. This allows us to quickly demonstrate X++ code, um, show you how it works, and then later you can move this code to whatever form or class or report um, that you need it to be in. But this is the fastest way to demonstrate. Okay, so in order to get the sales order totals, there's three things that we essentially need to do every single time. The first thing we need to do is to find the sales order 
that we're looking to get the totals for and select it into a sales table buffer. So I've gone ahead and declared a sales table um, buffer, called it sales table. I declared a variable called sales ID and I entered in the name of a sales ID that I have in my system. Your sales ID might be a different number. Next, I called find on the sales table table. Um, this is a static method. I can pass in my sales table variable. It's going to do a select statement and put the sales table that it finds into this table buffer. Then as a good best practice, I should always check to see if I found that sales table. This is essentially saying if sales table dot rec ID does not equal zero, then go into this if statement. If I didn't find this sales table because it, you know there's no sales order with this number in it, I don't want to run any of the rest of this code because it wouldn't make sense and would you know waste the system's performance to, to run. So assuming I did find the sales order, the next, the second step that I need to do is I need to um, declare and instantiate the sales totals class. So if you search the application explorer for sales totals, you'll find it. Um, it's just a class here. I can call construct on this class and this constructs going to take two parameters the first one we're going to focus on here is the sales table so i need to tell it hey which sales order are we working on which one do we want totals for and pass that into the construct method once i have my instantiated sales totals the third step that i need to do is i need to call dot calc and dot calc will go ahead and calculate all of the different sales order totals that I need. If you really just need one, there's probably more efficient ways to do it, but in general you call calc. That will calculate all the different totals um, we need for the purposes of viewing them later. So those were the three steps. Uh, find your sales order, instantiate the sales order totals class, and call calc. Once we've done that, the, the next piece is deciding which total do we actually want to view. And to start, I'm going to show you an example. So here I've declared a variable called total amount. And then using this instantiated class called sales totals, I've called the method total amount. This is going to return back out the total amount of this sales order. And then I've written an info statement to print out that total amount. There are many, many other totals that we can actually look at. So I've written a few here. I've written total tax amount, total line discount, and total markup. All of these um, you can just find by looking at the classes. But what's a little confusing is they're not actually on the sales totals class. If we look through here, we're not actually gonna see these totals. So what we actually need to realize is if we go to the sales totals class, this class extends um, a parent class called trade totals. And so it's actually on trade totals that we find most of the totals methods we're looking for. So you can search for trade totals and then open the designer. I've gone ahead and already done that. Um, and on this class, there's a whole lot more methods. And if you scroll down to where it starts saying total, this is where you can find the methods that we're really interested in. Total amount, um, total balance, total end discount, line discount, total markup, which is typically your shipping amount, um, etc. Even total weight and total volume you can see in here as well. So go ahead and look through here, find the method that you need, and this will um, return uh, the total that you're looking for on that sales order. So that's really it. I'll let you even drill into these methods and understand how they work, um, but usually you don't have to know those details. You just need to know how to instantiate this class, call calculate, and call their associated methods. 
The last thing that I'll say as kind of a disclaimer is again, most of these methods are gonna look at the current order balance. And so the uninvoiced portion of the sales order. And so if you want to have the full order total, regardless of whether you've invoiced some amount or the entire amount, um, you might need to do a little bit more work. So on these last few, I'm actually calling sales totals dot total amount to get the uninvoiced balance on the order. But then I'm actually calling a method on the sales table table buffer called amount invoiced to get how much has already been invoiced. And if I sum those two together, I get a new total amount that will stay the same kind of regardless of whether I've partially shipped this product or not. And you can do the same thing for the different tax amount, line discount, markup, invoice. And it seems most of those methods are on the sales table table um, itself. So go ahead and look for those. So if you're not getting what you need or you need some combination of invoice or un-invoice, definitely pay attention to that. Okay. That's it for um, this lesson. Hopefully you've learned something new. Hopefully you have a chance to use this sometime in the future. This is definitely a really helpful class um, to know how to use. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.